In this episode, you will learn how to migrate from setup and teardown methods in exit test into Swift testing. Let's start here uh, with this exit test uh, set of uh, tests. I don't have exactly a real test, but the point of this uh, demo is to show you that I have three tests, okay? And uh, each of them depends on this, uh, my value, which is equal to zero at the beginning, okay? And each of these tests will increase by, uh, by 10 the amount of information, okay? So let's see what happened if we run this now. You see immediately an issue. The problem is that, well, value is getting, uh, is passing from zero to 10 in this operation. And this uh, assert is fine, right? Because it's my value is 10. The problem here is that now we got 20, we got 30 because we are accumulating uh, the amount of data, uh, sorry, the, the values, okay? Here, instead of being zero, it is 10 and then 10 plus 10 is 20. So this operation or this assert is not right. Of course, this is not a real test. So the point of this demo is to show you how can we initialize objects before each test, okay? So uh, before running test two, I would like to clean that up, okay? And so on. So if I have n numbers, so before starting the current test, I want to uh, reinitialize this operation or th this value, okay? So for that, in exit test, we have a method called setup. Let's call it right here. And okay, this is uh, the actual setup here. And what setup will do is that uh, before each test is about to run, we will execute something. And mostly, what we want is just to execute something that will clean up uh, the objects for our test. In this case, I am adding my value equal to zero to restart uh, the counter, okay? So if we click here, let's see that all the tests are passing now because each test is running with my value equal to zero at the beginning, which is great, okay? Now, there are there is another method called teardown. And, and this one, it is doing the opposite. In this one, we run before running the test, we are executing setup. But teardown will be executed at the end of each test. Okay? So basically, we can do the same, like, you know, uh, moving this here. And just forgetting about this one for now. And you will see that uh, the test will pass because here we are in 10, but at the, at the end of this test, we are setting this to zero again. This is great if, let's say, you want to deinitialize something and set it to nil. Well, you can use third down for that, okay? So, okay, I think you get the idea of what is, uh, you know, uh, set up and third down, okay? Now, what will happen if we want to migrate this code into Swift testing? Let's see that. Okay, let's collapse this code for now. And let me bring this. That is the actual suite, but now using Swift testing, okay? So you will see that the only difference here is that um, I'm adding a print um, statement just to see in the console what is the order of the execution. That will be fun in just a moment, okay? So uh, again, we have the same uh, my value equal to zero, and we have the same operations. We are adding plus 10, and we are expecting 10 in each of the tests, okay? Let's run this. Okay, uh, as you remember, Swift testing runs each of the tests in parallel. It will be Swift testing which decide which test should run first, okay? And then here, uh, test two is executing first. That means, okay, uh, the other test will be affected. If we run this again, yeah, well, in this case, it's still running the second test. Yeah, there we go. Now, the, third, the first one is the one that we're running, but the other two now are affecting. By the way, I have a video about uh, that, about uh, parallelization in Swift testing. If you want to take a look, I recommend you. I just I will leave a card in 
I'll link it in the description. Okay, so now uh, in Swift testing, we don't have the setup and teardown uh, functions. Okay, so then uh, what can we do instead? Well, since that this is a struct, we can use init. And in fact, init is, let's say, the uh, actual replacement for setup. Okay, and then here we can just add my value and we can initialize it equal to zero. And let me add something here. Let me add a print just to show that in it was called. Okay. Now let's run this and see what happened. Look that now all the tests are passing and let's see in the console. Okay. Let me expand this a little bit. There we go. So here uh, we, the first test that we are running is, let me see, let me see, yeah. We are first calling init and then executing test two. That's cool. Then when we execute the next test, we are uh, again in, uh, invoking init and executing test three. Great. And finally, we execute init again, but this in this case for test one. So in each operation, you are getting um, a cleanup of my value uh, object. This is great and this is expected because even that the code is running in parallel, you always know that the first operation will be in it. That's great and then uh, setup will work as expected. Now, what will happen if we want to use teardown? Again, teardown is not available in Swift testing, but technically we have, you know, um, the an equivalent. If init is the equivalent of setup, you might imagine that teardown has an equivalent called the init. Okay. The problem is that, well, the init is not available in structs. So if you need to use the, the init or let's say that you're refactoring exit test, test uh, and your configuration is using teardown. So instead of using a struct, you will have to use a class. In this case, we'll use actually a final class. And don't worry, this will work as expected. Okay. So no matter if, I mean, by default, you should use a struct, but if for some reason you need to de initialize your objects, well, you will have to use final class. That's the way uh, that is in the documentation, by the way. Okay. Now let's see, now let's, let's, uh, you know, uh, hide this code for now and bring this one here. And now let's see what happened. So, Teardown was working as expected, you know, uh, with all tests passing because teardown is executed at the end of each, uh, each test in exit test. But here we got a different result. And the thing is that exit test is running everything in, in, uh, in serial. Okay. So that means it's expected that after a test is complete, we are executing tests uh, teardown. But here, since that this is parallel, you don't know when you will be executing the same, the, the init, okay? It will be executed at the end of the test. But since we are running multiple tests at the same time, you're not guaranteed to have to know where that the init will be called. And if you got here, uh, this console, you will see that um, we, are, we are executing a three uh, test, uh, not at the same time, but we are doing something and then later we are calling the init. That means, um, yeah, uh, this could be confusing if you read the documentation. And that's uh, something that I created in GitHub. If you can see that right now the screen, you will see that I created a post indicating, oh, uh, the documentation is saying that it's really straightforward just to uh, replacing teardown with the init, but the reality is that uh, that's not as simple as it is just in the document. I talked to a person 
in GitHub, uh, and I really appreciate uh, uh, Jonathan for your time replying my comment. Um, just su suggesting that uh, well, the Apple documentation should, you know, uh, just add a note saying, hey, it is not as straightforward as it sounds. In my opinion, you have two options. One is making your test serialized or refactoring, taking your time to refactoring your code in order to not depending on teardown or making it not uh, so dependent that this kind of issues will happen. But that maybe will take some time if your testing setup is a bit complex. And I assume that it will be way more complex than this demo that you're seeing now. So let's demonstrate what I tried to say for uh, making it serialized. And I have a video explaining this, by the way, uh, uh, explaining serialization too. It's just as simple as using serialized. And let's see now what happened. Everything is passing again because it's now expected that the init is executed in order. And we will see now that, yeah, text one is executed, the init is called, then the next one and the init is called, and so on. But uh, again, if you want to use exit test and you want to migrate from teardown right away, this is your fastest way to do it just making it serialized. But if you want to make it parallel, that is the best way to do it, uh, Swift testing, um, it is not as simple as that. Just keep that in mind because the documentation is not telling you anything about it. And that was my, one of my complaints um, when I opened that, that post that, uh, yeah, I need to understand or remember that, that there is uh, that the parallel uh, behavior of Swift testing and not adapting uh, the the sorry the, the init in a way of uh, replacing purely how the uh, teardown was executed in exit test. So hope that it's clear. And if you have any question about that, please let me know in the comments. But in theory, this is the way how you could migrate from setup and teardown into Swift testing, just using init and the init. And if you want to use uh, teardown or the init, well, you will have to change your struct, uh, your struct suite with a final class. That's it for this episode. Remember that there is more content about Swift testing and more Swift in general in the description below. Remember, my name is Pete, and this, this is Swift and Tips. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.